Hi everyone, this is Ozzy Ruiz from Red Glove News, catching up with female boxer India Rodriguez. Uh, she has an announcement to make. She has an upcoming fight on April the 27th from the Sunny Hall in New York. She's mm -hmm. facing Mio Yoshida, an undefeated, um, a rec with a record of 15 and three, Japanese boxer making her US debut. First of all, it's an honor to meet you. Um, India, talk to us about your upcoming fight. Uh, well, you know, uh, I'm going to be fighting, like you said, Mio Yoshida in New York uh, at the end of this month, April 27th. You know, um, I'm very excited. I'm always excited, always nervous about a fight, you know, because you never know what you're walking into. But I'm just excited for this opportunity to go back out to New York. This is going to be my fourth time fighting in New York. So that's just crazy to me that I keep getting invited to go back to New York in the first place, you know. Well, first well, of all, you, like I was mentioning to you before we started this interview, you're mm -hmm. coming off a big win for you against Sule Urbina, a, yeah. a uh, world title contender. At the time, she only had two losses against two uh, world champions, uh, Fujioka and the current WBC and WBA world champ Marlene Esparza. So, you know, you had a big name in front of you mm -hmm. and uh, you defeated her by unanimous decision. Talk to us about what that victory meant to you. And this would be your third uh, fight in a row in New York. So, uh, Well, that fight, I knew because I was fighting, you know, Sorlin Morbina, like you said, she only had two losses before me. So I knew I had to come in there and really show out. I had to really show out for them to even give me a glance, to even give them to... You know, it could have went, it could have went to her, but I had to make sure that there was no question. That was the main thing I had to do going into that fight with Salim. So it was a, it was a big deal. It was a big deal. I felt, I felt good about it. It was awesome to go out there and like show out in front of such a competitor. And I'm excited that they invited me out there to fight another strong competitor, you know? And you get to fight at the Sony Hall. Uh, mm -hmm. You got to fight Makaya Krebs there, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, I fought Makaya at a, what was it? At a different hall. It wasn't at Sony Hall. We fought okay. at... Oh, uh, you fought Sulem Rubina. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's where I fought Sulem. <laughs> I fought Makaya at the at the Edison. The Edison, right. they had their own, their own thing. Yeah, it's right next. They're right next to each other. Like, they're on the same block. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you came out very aggressively. You mm -hmm. you you brought the fight to Sulem. Um, there was a headbutt at the end of the fight. Nonetheless, you won a, a, a unanimous decision and, and you actually got to get your name out there for all those uh, boxing mm -hmm. fans. That's probably one of the reasons why you got invited to fight in New York again, because you're yeah. actually building now a fan base. You got your name out there. Some people are starting to follow your career. Even mm -hmm. though you have a, a six and six record, you've, you've had very competitive fights against all those fighters. Uh, very well-established fighters, Christina Cruz, um, Makaya Krebs, you know, you mm -hmm. got to fight Gabriela, uh, Gabriela Fundora here in, in, in California as well. So even though you've come out on, on, on the short end of those fights, you've been mm -hmm. very competitive, you know, throughout your boxing career. Yeah, um, I'm actually seven, seven, and two. Seven, I have seven. this will be my seventeenth professional fight. Like it, okay. oh, it's on showbox, it shows six and six. So I, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> they they just got it mixed up on there. But yeah, I'm, I'm seven, seven, and two, which is crazy because I only been professional. I went professional in 2020. It's only okay. been like three years. So we've been we've been rolling. We've been trying to <laughs> get these fights in. Mm -hmm. how, how does a fighter, a young fighter like yourself, has that drive, even though you've had those losses, to continue your boxing career and, and pursue what it is that you want to do, um, which is, you know, the ultimate to win a world title uh, belt? Well, at the end of the day, what we do, it's a sport. It's a sport. And I know as, much, as hard as I train, there will be someone out there who might get the better of me. That doesn't mean I'm a bad fighter, so I don't feel that should make me quit. I'm not going to let my losses, you know, define me. And plus, I have kids looking up to me, and I don't want them to see, oh, she lost some fights. She's just going to stop. No, 
I'm going to keep going. I'm pushing. I believe in myself and I feel like I could be a world champion. So I'm going to keep pushing until I get there. Like a lot of fighters, you obviously were all were affected by the, by the pandemic. So mm -hmm. 2021, that, that, uh, put a uh, stop to your career and you took it from there. You, you made your pro debut in 2020. Mm -hmm. How have, what are, what of those losses, which is the one that you've learned the most? Or this is the one that you say, you know what? It, it was so close that I could have come up with the W. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, with every loss, I learned something from it. You know, like, uh, okay, you could have done this different in that fight or okay, you could have stepped this up a little better in that fight. And I feel like that really prepared me for this last fight I had like with Urbina because I used to have a problem with people kind of moving from me in the ring and stuff like that. But I had to learn, okay, you have to stay on top of them. You can't give them room. You have to, you have to be aggressive. You can't, I'm the shorter fighter. I have to make yes. sure I'm, I'm in there, you know? Yes. So I learned that throughout my time as a professional to really stick on people, you know? What can you tell us about Ami or Yoshida, your your uh, upcoming uh, uh, um, fight, your 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 the fighter you you'll be facing on April the twenty seventh? Um, well, uh, there's not a lot of information on her online. She's only fought in Japan before here. This is yes. her U.S. debut, so I know that uh, she's a tough fighter. I know that Bella wouldn't have signed her if she wasn't, you know, a strong and tough yes. competitor. She's so not a I'm, Ludibella I'm fighter. Hmm? Ludibella's just signed her. She's also a Ludibella fighter. Now. Yeah. So that means yeah, so they have a lot of, mm -hmm. they, they, they trust her, they believe in her abilities. It, it's, mm -hmm. they, they assume she's going to beat you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the, the gist <laughs> of it. I'm always the B side. They always sending me places to go get beat up. So that's just, that it is what it is. It is what it is, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Um, since we're on the subject, you know, you, you fought in Miami, New York, New Mexico, Carson, California, South Carolina, San Antonio, you name it, you've been all over the place. How yeah. does that make you feel? Again, you just mentioned that you're the B, B side fighter, but you've proved some of these people wrong. Um, it makes me feel, honestly, it makes me good, feel good when I could go out there. And even when I lose, people still come up to me like, man, that was a fight. Like you really, that felt like the fight of the night. And that makes me feel good. Cause even when I lose, I know that, Hey, they saw that I gave everything that I went out there and I gave it my all in every fight. And what we do is also as much as it is a sport is entertainment. And I know that I just came out there and I put on a show. I entertain the folks who came out there to see a show. And that makes me feel good. It honestly it makes me feel good. And that's why I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. So how, how does that, again, going back to the Suleim Rubina fight, mm -hmm. when, when the decision was announced and the fans in attendance were there, how, what was their reaction? And, and now that you're going back to the same venue, you, you probably, you may be the favorite among those fans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, when they said my name, because I was kind of nervous, I was like, because you never know when you're in the mix of it, you don't, you don't really know how you're doing. You're just like, okay, you got to do better this next round. You got to do better. You got to do better. At least that's how I feel, regardless of how the fight is going. So I was like, I just hope they call my name. And when they called my name, I just felt so good because I felt like I really proved something that night. Like I fought Salim Urbina in New York. You know, she has she was 13 and two and yeah. I really beat her, you know, unanimously. That that meant a lot to me and for the crowd and everyone to be there. And I didn't have no one in the crowd for me, really. We just oh, had wow. like two folks there for me. So it was it was pretty amazing. It was really amazing. It was an amazing feeling. You put your name out there in the uh, 112 uh, pound division then. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely making my stamp right now. <laughs> How do you feel about the current uh, 112 uh, uh, world champs? Uh, we got Arely Musino, we got Marlene Esparza. We got Gabriela Alanis, a couple of more fights. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll be ranked in the top 10. You may get a shot mm -hmm. sometime now, early next year. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think, like, the female boxing scene, like, we got some strong fighters. And that's why I feel like I just got to keep improving myself. Because if I really want to get up there and be a champ myself, I got to go up against these tough fighters one day. Like Marlon and all these other people you just mentioned. Like, I'm going to have to fight them one day. 
and I'm I'm ready for the challenge. Like I'm up for it. I'm up for it. But I know I got a couple more fights to get there. But I'm I'm up to get there. I'm up okay. to get up to that point. Would you be willing to uh, fly to uh, Southern Cali again to fight any uh, top ten contender? Uh, there is a huge boxing mm -hmm. fan base here in here in the Los Angeles area. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping for another fight out there. I only fought out in California once now, but I feel like as my name gets out there and I get some more wins under my belt, I know that's something that's important. I have to win more fights to want to get, you know, sent out to fight these big names. So I want to get out to California. I know that's where a lot of big names live. I know that's where a lot of the fight scene right. is happening. So I'm trying to get over to California. I exactly. want to be wherever the fights are. You got Sinisa Strada, the world mm. champ, living and training here. You got Yocasta Valle, another world mm. champ, training here. It, it's it's the hub. It's the boxing hub yeah. of, of, of many, many world champs here in, here, here in the Los Angeles area. So if, if if I could mention your name, I could help you a little bit, you know, you're putting your name out there for all those female fighters. Here mm. is a young fighter by the name of India Rodriguez. Willing to fight anybody out there in the Los Angeles area? Boxing promoters, boxing mm -hmm. boxing managers, give this young lady a, a chance to come back and, and and showcase her talent here in Los Angeles, right? Yeah, yeah. I just <laughs> want to show people what I can do. I'm this. That's why I fought everywhere except for really here, where I'm, you know, in my base. I've been fighting wherever I could get a fight because I just want to fight. You know, I'm I'm just trying to make it happen. Like last year, I had seven fights, and the year before that, I had seven fights, and that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, okay, so what is what is uh, explain to me what is the process of of your manager or yourself selecting a fight, or or is there a process for you to say this is who I want to fight, or I'm just I'm ready. I'm I've been doing my training camp. Give me a name. Give me a venue. We'll make it happen. How, how, how do you guys go about that? Well, with us, we just try to stay ready. We just try to stay ready for whatever might pop up. Because right now, I don't really have much of a name. So I don't really have much of a choice, really, okay. in who I fight. Because I just, I know I got to get my name up there. And I also don't want to be too picky with my fights because I, I want to be the best. I got to beat the best. That's just... Right. <laughs> That's just how I see it. I can't just, you know, you know, wait around. But I do know there's levels to it. Like I'm not just about to go, hey, I'm gonna go fight Estrada next month. I can't do that. That's yeah, not right, right. I'm not up there yet. Yeah. I can't I can't do that yet. But that's what I'm working up to one day, you know, to fight Marlon, to fight Estrada, but not, you know, I gotta get up to their level to, to do all that. Since since you watch Marlon Estrada's uh, you know boxing record her fights and stuff is there any of her previous opponents that you may think oh this is some someone i could match up against again to get your name out there to to move up the ranks and say okay this will get me closer to to uh to a ranking to a to a place where i could actually get to meet marlena sparsa in the future probably uh who she beat to I can't, I'm not, I'm gonna pronounce her name so wrong. The one she just beat to get the belt, you know, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, it's all right. <laughs> um, but honestly, everyone she's fought, I want to get a piece of. Like, I'm yeah. trying to, you know, I'm just trying to build my way up to wanting to be on a level, to wanting to, you know, I want to fight them, but I want to, I want to earn that spot to be, I want when I fight them, it to be a big thing. Like, oh, she's not just fighting India. No, they're fighting, it's India versus Marlon. Like, this is going to be a thing. You know, okay. I want it to mean something. I don't want to just be some other name, some other B-side fighter that they just throw in there to get her a win or something. You know, I want it to mean something when I eventually go up against these ladies. Okay. Your, mm -hmm. your, for this for this world chance for these contenders your your record overall may be deceiving seven and seven but again you've been in very competitive fights very close fights so they may think of you as someone of an easier opponent on fight night mm -hmm. you may you may actually upset them on fight night yeah yeah my, my record can definitely be deceiving <laughs> 
of what I can do. But I think that just goes into, like you said, the people I fought, like I fought Christina Cruz, you know, yeah. Makaya Krebs, the Gabrielle Fundora, those aren't easy fighters. And yeah, I lost to them, but like we were going at it. That was, they were fights. We were, yeah. it was a competition and I may have losses on my records, but that doesn't mean I'm a bad fighter. Okay. Since you say you're building your name out there, you could go ahead and tell your your Instagram handle, how do can people can follow you, how they could uh, stay in touch with your with your boxing career. Okay, so uh, you can follow me on Instagram under India, I-N-D-E-Y-A, LaShawn, L-A-S-H-A-W-N. And then you can also follow me on Facebook under India Rodriguez. Uh, that's a, my main two things that I do. You know, I post up me working out mostly of me with my family, but, uh, yeah, that's how you can reach me and, you know, check me out and see what I'm up to. So Mario Herrera, so you're based in Dallas, right? That, yes. Sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. So road, road warrior, road traveler, <laughs> you pack your bag, your boxing equipment, off yeah. you go. Do you want to fight in Dallas sometime soon, um, India? I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. I just haven't had the opportunity. All the fights I've been offered have been in other places, and okay. I just don't want to wait. So we've been we've been rolling. We've been hitting the road, fighting in people's hometowns. It's just what we got to do right now. But hopefully soon I can have a fight out here in Dallas because I know people will come see me. You like the boxing scene in New York for, for female boxing? You know, all those big fights that they've had. Uh, the the Taylor uh, uh, Serrano fight, you know, yeah. that was huge. Uh, um, people are very excited about what the mm -hmm. whole boxing scene, uh, you know, with Sanisa Estrada, with Yocasta Valle, mm -hmm. they're all over ESPN, Golden Ball yeah. Promotions, all that stuff. It, 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 mm -hmm. There's a big fan base out there. You know, the, the, the road has been completely wide open for for uh for female boxing now yes it has it has like um the first time I went out there I fought at the garden against Christina Cruz yes and even though it was a little bit after like we we're in that weird spot of COVID where people could come out but it wasn't really super open so there was still a crowd there a little bit of a crowd and it was pretty crazy to see like you know the lights and it was under trailer promotions it was a whole a whole event and that felt pretty cool and I couldn't believe that I was like in <laughs> the garden like fighting like that That's was such a, a big, big garden, opportunity yeah. yeah it was insane like I felt like so honored to be there like to walk in there and see my name on the door <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was crazy you know how was the fight against Christina Cruz a a, a, a widely well decorated um, mm -hmm. amateur boxer that was making her pro debut against yourself that night Man, it was it was a hell of a fight, you know. Like I felt like we were going at it. She was definitely using her reach on me, but I was able to get in there and hit her with some of my shots. So I felt like it was a good fight, and it showed what I could do up against someone who has all those decorations. Like I didn't ever get to those type of levels in national, you know, when I was an amateur. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> when I was <laughs> When I was an amateur, I never got up to those type of levels like her. So I was, it was nice to see how I could come up against a fighter of her caliber, you know, because I never got to do that really in amateurs. I just kind of, like, I did good, but I didn't do super good in amateurs, you know. Okay. But you handled yourself pretty well. Again, it was a very yeah. competitive fight, even though you, well, it was a, a majority decision. Mm -hmm. you know, one of the judges had it a draw that 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 says a lot about your performance that night so yeah um there are some uh small uh boxing promotion companies here in the los angeles area um they're they're uh they're, they're having some female uh boxing matches as well i'm gonna go ahead and mention them to you since i've covered some of their mm -hmm. events we got red boxing here you could google it find find their website stuff like that elite boxing promotion and there is an upcoming upcoming boxing promotional company by the name of marv nation okay. they have yocasta valle uh the current uh, minimum weight world champ they've uh co-promoted fights with golden ball promotions you cost mm -hmm. yocasta valle she's a golden ball promotion fighter as well there's a very good opportunity of you and your manager mario herrera mm -hmm. of of 
you know, connecting with Marv Nation and maybe you'll get to uh, land uh, on one of their, their boxing cars here in Southern California. That that could be great. Yeah. For you. I would love that. I would love to go back out to Cali. Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to hit the road again. We're trying to hit for another seven fights this year. That's the goal. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So if, if you get to be on a on a winning streak, you know, let's say you get to 10 and 7, 11 and 7, that could be actually for you to get a bigger fight. Yes. That, that could be some, let, let's just say some something of a ESPN uh, um, undercard, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Golden Ball promotion. They're always, I don't know if you get to watch their, their uh, events on uh, the zone, you know, yeah. they have, they have some of these uh, undercard events with uh, female mm -hmm. fighters as well. You just yeah. gotta get those W's, you know. Yeah, out of the way. That's, the, that's the most important part is <laughs> yes. getting those W's. That's why we are trying to be a little more careful about the fights I take. But I'm still just trying to fight. I don't want to just be too idle. I want. I have to fight. Like I have to fight. I have to get out there. I have to get those wins. So I have to make myself available for it. Yeah. Since you don't have that much uh, information about Mio Yoshida again on April 27th. What do you think her, her biggest uh, strength is based on anything you've covered? Her, her height, she's a little taller than you. Yeah, she's a little taller than me. And she was actually at the fights that I had with Salem. So she got to actually see me. All right. Yeah, so I feel like she has that advantage. She kind of knows how I'll come out, but I always come a little different. So I, don't, I, should, I feel like she should take that with a grain of salt. Because that's what I do. I take everything, like what you may have done in this last fight, you could do so much within the time period that you last fought. You changed so much. So I was looking up for previous interviews of yourself, India, or on Facebook and all that stuff. You you haven't had that many interviews. So again, I, I appreciate the opportunity and you know we'll, we'll, we'll take it from here and hopefully after this interview, people will get to know a little bit more about India Rodriguez. Why your nickname, Azucar? <laughs> uh, my nickname is actually Azucar because of my husband. Um, okay. He introduced me to a singer called Celia Cruz. Oh, the singer, the salsa singer. Okay, so you yes, like her music? I love her. I love oh, her. She's wow. so positive. And, you know, she likes to go Azucar. Azuka right. and a lot yes. of her songs and she's in a good mood yes she does and my theme song is actually La Negra Ten and Two Bow that's my yeah yeah you know what that song. means you know that's what that means song. she's got she's got rhythm she's got it going on she that's what does. I mean. yeah she does and I love that song because I was like yes I want to be like that I don't sway I got rhythm I got this. is that is that your ring walk uh song have you ever come yeah, out when with I when they let me choose a song, I pick that song because oh, you don't always get a choice. But when they let me choose, I always go to that song. That's you should you song. should uh, tell all those PR people that's that's the song you want. People will will uh, connect your name with with the uh, Celia uh, Cruz's uh, song uh, La Negra Tiene Tumbao. Yeah, yeah. That's, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all I right. <laughs> so, so to close out the interview again, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I'm gonna remind those. Uh, Fight fans out there again. Mm -hmm. India Rodriguez is taking on Mio Yoshida on April the 27th from the Sony Hall in New York. How could people watch your fight? It's actually going to be on YouTube for free uh, right. on Boxing Insider. So, Boxing Insider has their own YouTube page. Yes. And you can actually find my last fight that I had with them on there on Holiday Night Fights. You know mm -hmm. what your. Uh, what fight you'll be fighting on? The number, the the the, the number of uh, the they fight. They haven't or... released the the sheet yet, so I'm not okay. sure. I don't know what my order will be. But what as soon time as I know, fight? I'll I'll let the public know. What time does the fight card start? Do you know that? It starts at seven. Seven Eastern mm -hmm. time. All right. Yeah. Seven okay. Eastern. Mm -hmm. So all those people out there that wanna catch uh, India's next fight, tune in on uh, Boxing Programmers YouTube channel mm -hmm. or 4 p.m. Eastern time. Do not want to miss it. Anything else you would like to share with your fight friends, India? Oh, I would just like to say thank you for having me on your show and introducing <laughs> me to your fans. And it was so nice meeting with you and talking with you about boxing. And I just want to let everyone know that I'm out here 
I'm I'm fighting and I'm trying to be the next champ and just know even if I have some bumps in the road, I'm not gonna stop. Um, I'm very determined to to make it to this mountaintop. You very you have a very nice personality, very very mm -hmm. outgoing. I'm surprised people haven't been covering you uh, um more often more, more than what there is out there on um of your fights and uh, all those YouTube uh you know coverage. So yeah. thank you again. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and uh, end this interview now. India Rodriguez Azúcar, she's a big Celia Cruz fan. Fans, <laughs> yeah, <I> forget <laughs> her name. <laughs> Back in action on April 27th. Thank you, guys. I will be tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank Appreciate you. It. Bye. All right, bye. All right. That was good. That was good. <laughs> All right, cool. <laughs>